Hey guys, my name is Devin Cherry and welcome to my next video for my Kismet tutorial series where today I'll be showing you how to create a simple uh, puzzle that involves uh, K actors or physics objects and allowing them to interact with trigger volumes to trigger events in Kismet. So let me first show you what I created uh, using this principle of laying uh, triggers being activated by K actors. So let me jump in. So right now I have my physics gun and I can drag my barrel K actor around, throw it around. So what I have set up is once you press this button, it'll be revealed that there's a pressure pad that you can trigger with your person with your body and it opens the door. But you can't get out fast enough. So what you need to do to solve the puzzle is to throw the K actor on there and then go through the door yourself and then it closes. So that's what I implemented using that kind of uh, structure uh, with the triggers and K actors uh, but for this tutorial I set up a simple scene uh, that does basically the same thing as what you saw in my level here except it's, bro it's broken down and it's really simplified. So let me find it so all I have here is I have our pressure pad button, I have our trigger volume, I have our K actor, and I have two doors that animate once there's, uh, once the K actor touches the volume is on our button. So let me jump in and play that. So as you can see, it basically did what my other level did, except I've made it more fancy with sound effects and particle effects. But this is basically what happens. Uh, you put a K actor touching the trigger volume, and then the doors open. So let me go into Kismet really quick, and I'll show you what the Kismet setup looks like. As you can see, it's really simple. Uh, we got our trigger volume touch event going into our matinee animation of our two doors. So the only complexity is knowing what properties to modify in our volume touch event, and what properties to mess with in our K actor. So that's where the complexity lies, so knowing which one, uh, which properties to mess with in order to get the desired effect is what made it uh, complicated, but once you know that, it's simple. So let's start from scratch and I'll show you how to recreate this scene here, and then using what you've learned here, maybe you can create a better puzzle than I did in my room that I showed you uh, at the beginning. So first off, let's go to open a new level, and let's just choose any of the defaults except for the blank map, choose anything with any sort of lighting, so I'm just going to go into uh, morning lighting. So the first thing I want to do, I want to go up to view, world properties, I want to change the default game type and the game type for PIE, I want to change both of those to UT game. Uh, changing it to UT game will allow the uh, editor to realize that th uh, the game type we want to use is UT game and therefore the Kismet scripts will run. If you have it on none, our Kismet scripts won't work and we won't have access to our physics gun. So we want, we want UT game for both the defi default game type and the game type for play and editor. So now that that's set up, let's start bringing in our actors from the content browser and put them into our scene. Let's go up to content browser and the first thing I want to do, I want to go to UDK game. I'm just going to type in door and then I'm going to check static meshes under our filters here and we want these two doors the s underscore hu underscore doors underscore sm underscore blast door zero one and then I want uh, the same name but zero two and they are two sides of the same kind of door it's like a huge vault door so I'm just going to left click drag and put them into our scene now I'm just going to manipulate their positions and uh, position them so they look closed uh, if you don't know uh, to change to the rotational widget, you just press the space bar, and then I'm just going to rotate. Okay, now, now that our door is set up, uh, we want to have them both selected, so selecting one and then holding control on the keyboard and left clicking on another object selects that object as well so you can have both selected. Now with both of them selected, right click on one of them and go down to convert and convert static mesh actor to mover. This will convert both the doors to movers 
turning them into interactors so that we can animate them in matinee and then reference them in Kismet. So now with them both selected still, press F4 on the keyboard to bring up properties on both of them. You'll see on the top they'll say interactor properties and then two selected so we know it's recognizing that these are the properties of both of these doors. And then in the search bar, type in collision and then down here under collision type, change it from collide underscore no collision to collide underscore block all. When you change an, uh, a static mesh into an interactor, it loses its collision. So we want to give it back its collision so that the player can't just walk through the doors. So now they'll get blocked if they try uh, passing through the doors. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to go back into Content Browser. I'm going to type in light, uh, still under UT game and still having the static mesh filter checked. I'm going to scroll down here until I find uh, the light actor I'm looking for. And it's S underscore LT underscore light underscore SM underscore light zero one. So left click drag it into our scene. And then I'm going to change the scale. So down here when you see all the, uh, the four ones, this is where you can change the draw scale of objects. So the first one on the far left for draw scale is the draw scale of the mesh overall. So it, it, if you change this to two, it will increase in size in the X, Y, and Z at the same time. Whereas the following three on uh, the right hand side here, uh, each one is an independent axis. So the first one's X, the second one is Y, and the third one is Z. So I'm just going to leave it here at, uh, as two, just so it's big enough so you can notice it. So I'm just going to position this as center as I can. Now, the last object we're going to need is our barrel. So back in our content browser, type in barrel. And let's take, uh, it's called Remade Fizz Barrel. So let's just throw this in our scene. Now right click, go down to Convert, and then Convert to K-Actor. Luckily when you convert something to K-Actor, it keeps its collision, because obviously it should. If it's going to be a physics object, it needs collision in order for physics to be applied. So now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to, with the barrel selected, we're going to press F4 on the keyboard to get into its properties. And then our search bar, let's just type in Encroach just so we can find the uh, no encroach check and if you read it says for encroachers don't do the overlap check when they move you will not get touch events for this actor moving but it's faster fa it's, it is much faster so if you want touch events from volumes or triggers you need to set this to false so that's why we're going to uncheck it we're going to set it to false false so that our barrel can trigger uh, events in kismet when we uh, have it touch our trigger volume that we're going to place in our scene next so now in order to add that trigger volume, we're going to have to manipulate our builder brush, which is this red builder brush right here. So we can move it, we can rotate it, we can do a lot of things with it. But what I want to do, I want to go over to brushes over here, and go right click cylinder, and then change uh, the Z to 32, and then it's outer radius to 32. So now we have a small little uh, cylinder that represents the, that's going to represent our trigger volume. So I'm going to go up to our top view by pressing the P button. The first choice is top. So now I'm just going to manipulate and drag the cylinder so it's right in the center of our light. And then I'm going to click T again and again and again. Get back into our perspective mode. And now we can just drag this down so it's sitting right on top of it like that. So next, we're going to right click on volumes right here. And we're going to go down to trigger volume. Now if we move our builder brush out of the way, we'll see that we have a, a trigger volume right here. So that's what our volume is going to be. So when the barrel touches this trigger, uh, we're going to have these doors open. So now that's set up, we can go into Kismet now and set up the simple Kismet sequence that's required here. So making sure our trigger volume is selected in the editor, let's right click in Kismet and go down to new event using trigger volume underscore zero and then touch. Now that our touch trigger volume event is in our Kismet sequence, we have to change some of its properties so that it recognizes to check for K actors touching uh, the borders of the volume. So the very first thing we're going to do, uh, under class proximity types, right now the default gives you pawn, and I don't want to have the pawn being able to trigger the door, so I'm going to press the X button right here to remove this item, and now I'm going to hit the plus to add a new item, and what I want to do from the drop down list we want to find K actor. So go up to K or press K on the keyboard to get to the, to the K's and then do the K actor. This will say, okay, just look for the class proximity types of K actors. So that's what we want. Next, 
We're going to uncheck uh, force overlapping. This uh, says force the player to be overlapping at the time of activation. We don't want the player to be overlapping at all, so let's just uncheck that. Next, we're going to do max trigger count. We're going to change that from 1 to 0 so that it triggers and fires uh, an infinite amount of times. That's what 0 stands for. Zero is not, it's not saying you can trigger this in 0 times. You can, this means you can trigger it an infinite amount of times instead of just once. And then last but not least, we're going to uncheck player only. So basically, if this is checked, it is required that this event is activ activated by the player. And we don't want that. We want this to be activated by the K actor barrel. So let's uncheck that. And that's all you need to do for the touch event. So next we're going to set up the matinee animation. So right click, go to new matinee. And then double click on the matinee to bring up matinee in a new window. Now with the left door selected, let's right click in the gray area of our matinee. Go to add new empty group. I'm just going to name this door underscore left. Now we're going to right click on this new empty group. And I'm going to go down, I'm going to go to add new movement track from the, uh, from the drop down list. And so now we have the ability to uh, create the animation of the door moving. So before we actually start that animation, I'm going to do the same thing we just did here for the left side of the door. Uh, we're going to do that for the right side of the door as well. So let's select our, the right door, go back into matinee, right click, add new empty group, do door underscore right as the name of the empty group. Now right click on the new empty group and do add new movement track. So now both the doors are able to move and animate. So the next thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to make the animation a total of 3 seconds. So I'm going to move the red bar to 3 seconds, uh, the, right, the red triangle I mean. And I'm also going to move the green triangle to 3 seconds. So this indicates that the whole animation is going to be 3 seconds long. So let's start animating now that this is set up. So I'm going to select the door underscore left movement track. I'm going to bring it to one second on the slider. Hit enter to create a new keyframe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bracket keys on my keyboard. Uh, the left bracket uh, de uh, decrements the size of our snapping grid for the editor. So if I hit press that, you'll see on the bottom here it will change from 8 to 4, and then down to 2, and then down to 1. And if you use the right bracket, it will increment back up. So I'm going to increment it up to 32, and now that it's 32, I'm going to drag the d left door to the left, 32 units, so one snap. I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, the right hand door, except I'm going to drag it 32 units to the right. So now, uh, if we play the animation, they open up briefly. And now, what I want to have happen here is I want it to stay at this open position for another second. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another keyframe at two seconds for both movement tracks. Except we're not going to animate our door. So if you if we play it here, it'll stay open for those two seconds and nothing will happen. And then from here, uh, we want the doors to open the rest of the way. So let's bring our slider to three seconds. And let's animate it uh, another... Let's do 128, so increment your... Uh, snapping grid to 128. Let's drag it to the left, one, 128 units. And let's do the same thing with the right hand side door. Uh, create a new keyframe at 3 seconds and then move it back to the right, 128 units. So now if we play our animation, it'll briefly open, pause, and then open the rest of the way. So let's play it real fast. Let me get, let me create a second window here. Let's play it. And that looks good. So now all we have to do now is in our touch event, let's plug in the touched output into the play input of the matinee, and then the untouched output of the touch event into the reverse input of the matinee. So basically what happens is once you place the barrel onto the trigger volume platform, the doors will start to open and then finally open. And if you remove the barrel, it will close again. So let's jump in really fast. Let's play. Now to get the physics gun, all you have to do is uh, scroll the scroll wheel forward or backwards and the physics gun is invisible but the reticle changes. And if you right click and hold it, you'll be able to pick up objects. And if you just left click, it'll just push them. So let's place this, uh, uh, this K actor barrel onto our pressure pad button. 
and as you can see, if we get it to stay, as you see it closes when it's off, and then opens when it's on. As you can see, it works. So that's the conclusion of this tutorial. So uh, just to recap, uh, placing a trigger volume, all you have to do is in Kismet, when you create the new touch event, all you have to do is create a key actor proximity type for the touch type, uncheck force overlapping, and uh, the trigger count doesn't really matter, but uh, play, uh, you gotta uncheck player only so that it recognizes that it can be triggered by other things besides the player. And then all you have to do in the k-actor properties is change no uncoach check, uncheck that, make it false so that it can trigger uh, events in Kismet with trigger volumes and trigger actors. So thanks for watching. Um, in the comments below, please tell me if you enjoyed this tutorial, if it was helpful, uh, things I can improve on, uh, maybe ideas for tutorials for the future that you need help with. Uh, in, the de in the description, you'll find links to my online portfolio as well as links to uh, two projects that I'm working on as a level designer. Uh, they're both in the, in the description. Check them out. Uh, tell me what you think about them. Uh, also, check out my other videos. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I hope you learned a lot.